on the peru by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by caroline on the peru peru the name of a watercourse often dry which in flood time reaches the river darling as when the strong stream of a wintering sea rolls round our coast with boatful breaks of storm and swift salt rain and bitter wind that saith wild things and woeful of the white south land alone with god and silence in the cold as when this cometh men from dripping doors look forth and shudder for the mariners abroad so we for absent brothers looked in days of a drought and when the flying floods swept boundless roaring down the bold black plains beyond the farthest spur of western hills for where the barwon cuts a rotten land or lies unshaken like a great blind creek between hot mouldering banks it came to this all in a time of short and thirsty sighs that thirty rainless months had left the pools and grass as dry as ashes then it was our kinsmen started for the lone peru from point to point with patient strivings sheer across the horrors of the windless downs blue gleaming like a sea of molten steel but never drought had broke them never flood had quenched them they with mighty youth and health and those and sinews knotted like the trees they like the children of the native woods could stem the strenuous waters or outlive the crimson days and dull dead nights of thirst like camels yet of what avail was strength alone to them though it was like the rocks on stormy mountains in the bloody time when fierce sleep caught them in the camps at rest and violent darkness gripped the life in them and whelmed them as an eagle unawares is whelmed and slaughtered in a sudden snare all murdered by the blacks smit while they lay in silver dreams and with the far faint fall of many waters breaking in their sleep yea in the tracts unknown of any man save savages the dim discovered ways of footless silence or unhappy winds the wild men came upon them like a fire of desert thunder and the fine firm lips that touched a mother's lips a year before and hands that knew a dearer hand than life were hoon a sacrifice before the stars and left with hooting owls and blowing clouds and falling leaves and solitary wings ay you may see their graves you who have toiled and tripped and thirsted like these men of ours for verily i say that not so deep their bones are that the scattered drift and dust of gusty days will never leave them bare o oh, dear dead bleaching bones i know of those who have the wild strong will to go and sit outside all things with you and keep the ways aloof from bats and snakes and trampling feet that smite your peace and theirs who have the heart without the lusty limbs to face the fire and moonless midnights and to be indeed for very sorrow like a moaning wind in wintry forests with perpetual rain because of this because of sisters left with desperate purpose and dishevelled hair and broken breath and sweetness quenched in tears because of swifter silver from the head and furrows for the face because of these that should have come with age that come with pain o master father sitting where our eyes are tired of looking say for once are we are we to set our lips with weary smiles
before the bitterness of life and death and call it honey while we bear away a taste like wormwood turn thyself and sing sing son of sorrow is there any gain for breaking of the loins for melting the eyes and knees as weak as water any peace or hope for casual breath and labouring lips for clapping of the palms and sharper sighs than frost or any light to come for those who stand and mumble in the alien streets with heads as grey as winter any balm for pleading women and the love that knows of nothing left to love they sleep a sleep unknown of dreams these darling friends of ours and we who taste the core of many tales of tribulation we whose lives are salt with tears indeed we therefore hide our eyes and weep in secret lest our grief should risk the rest that hath no hurt from daily racks of fiery clouds and immemorial rains end of poem this recording is in the public domain faith in god by henry kendall read for librivox dot org by larry wilson have faith in god for whosoever lists to calm conviction in these days of strife will learn that in this steadfast stand exists the scholarship severe of human life this face to face with doubt i know how strong his thews must be who fights and falls and bears by sleepless nights and vigils lone and long and many a woeful wraith of wrestling prayers yet trust him not in an old man throned with thunders on an everlasting cloud but in that awful entity and zoned by no wild wraths nor bitter homage loud when from the summit of some sudden steep of speculation you have strength to turn to things too boundless for the broken sweep of finer comprehension wait and learn that god hath been his own interpreter from first to last so you will understand the tribe who best succeed when men most err to suck through fogs the fatness of the land one thing is surer than the autumn tints we saw last week in yonder river bent that all our poor expression helps and hints however vaguely to the solemn end that god is truth and if our dim ideal falls short of fact so short that we must weep why shape specific sorrows though the real but not the song which erewhile made us sleep remember truth draws upward this to us of steady happiness should be a cause beyond the differential calculus of kant's dull dogmas and mechanic laws a man is manliest when he wisely knows how vain it is to halt and pew and pine whilst under every mystery haply flows the finest issue of a love divine end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mountain Moss by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Cal Taylor. It lies amongst the sleeping stones, far down the hidden mountain glade, and past its brink the torrent moans forever in a dreamy shade. A little patch of dark green moss, whose softness grew of quiet ways, with all its deep delicious floss, in slumber's suns of summer days. You know the place? with pleasant tints the broken sunset lights the bowers and then the woods are full with hints of distant dear voluptuous flowers tis often now the pilgrim turns a faded face towards that seat and cools his brow amongst the ferns the runnel dabbling at his feet there fierce december seldom goes with scorching step and dust and drought but soft and low october blows sweet odors from her dewy mouth and autumn like a gypsy bold doth gather near it grapes and grain ere winter comes the woodman old to lop the leaves in wind and rain o oh, greenest moss of mountain glen the face of rose is known to thee but we shall never share with men 
a knowledge dear to love and me for are they not between us save the words my darling used to say what time the western waters laid the forehead of the fainting day cool comfort we had on your breast while yet the fervid noon burned mute o'er barley field and barren crest and leagues of gardens flushed with fruit o oh, sweet and low we whispered so and sucked the pulp of plum and peach but it was many years ago when each you know was loved of each end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Glen of Arrawatta by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Caroline. The Glen of Arrawatta. A sky of wind, and while these fitful gusts are beating round the windows in the cold, with sullen sobs of rain, behold I shape a settler's story of the wild old times, one told by campfires when the station drays were housed and hidden forty years ago while swarthy drivers smoked their pipes and drew and crowded round the friendly gleaming flame that lured the dingo howling from his caves and brought sharp sudden feet about the brakes a tale of love and death and shall i say a tale of love in death for all the patient eyes that gathered darkness watching for a son and brother never dreaming of the fate the fearful fate he met alone unknown within the ruthless australasian wastes for in a far-off sultry summer rimmed with thunder-clouds and red with forest fires all day by ways uncouth and ledges rude the wild men held upon a stranger's trail which ran against the rivers and athwart the gorges of the deep blue western hills and when a cloudy sunset like the flame in windy evenings on the plains of thirst beyond the dead banks of the fair baku lay heavy down the topmost peaks they came with pent-in breath and stealthy steps and crouched like snakes among the grasses till the night had covered face from face and thrown the gloom of many shadows on the front of things there in the shelter of a nameless glen fenced round by cedars and the tangled growths of blackwood stained with brown and shot with grey the jaded white man built his fire and turned his horse adrift among the water-pools that trickled underneath the yellow leaves and made a pleasant murmur like the brooks of england through the sweet autumnal noons then after he had slacked his thirst and used the forest fare for which a healthful day of mountain life had brought a zest he took his axe and shaped with boughs and wattle forks a whirly fashioned like a bushman's roof the door brought out athwart the strenuous flame the black thatched in against a rising wind and while the sturdy hatchet filled the cliffs with sounds unknown the immemorial hounds of echoes sent their lonely dwellers forth who lived a life of wonder flying round and round the glen what time the kangaroo leapt from his lair and huddled with the bats far scattering down the wildly startled fells then came the doleful owl and evermore the bleak morass gave out the bittern's call the plover's cry and many a fitful wail of chilly omen falling on the ear like those cold flaws of wind that come and go an hour before the break of day anon the stranger held from toil and settling down he drew rough solace from his well-filled pipe and smoked into the night revolving there the primal questions of a squatter's life for in the flats a short day's journey past his present camp his station-yards were kept with many a lodge and paddock jutting forth 
across the heart of unnamed prairie lands now loud with bleating and the cattle bells and misty with the hot fire's daily smoke wide spreading flats and western spurs of hills that dipped to plains of dim perpetual blue bold summits set against the thunder heaps and slopes be hacked and crushed by battling kine where now the furious tumult of their feet gives back the dust and up from glen and brake evokes fierce clamour and becomes indeed a token of the squatter's daring life which growing inland growing year by year doth set us thinking in these latter days and makes one ponder of the lonely lands beyond the lonely tracks of burke and wills where when the wandering steward fixed his camps in central wastes afar from any home or haunt of man and in the changeless midst of sullen deserts and the footless miles of sultry silence all the ways about grew strangely vocal and a marvellous noise became the wonder of the waxing glooms now after darkness like a mighty spell amongst the hills and dim dispeopled dells had brought a stillness to the soul of things it came to pass that from the secret depths of dripping gorges many a runnel voice came mellowed with the silence and remained about the caves a sweet though alien sound now rising ever like a fervent flute in moony evenings when the theme is love now falling as ye hear the sunday bells while hastening fieldward from the gleaming town then fell a softer mood and memory paused with faithful love amidst the sainted shrines of youth and passion in the valleys past of dear delights which never grow again and if the stranger who had left behind far anxious homesteads in a wave-swept isle to face a fierce sea-circle day by day and hear at night the dark atlantic's moan now took a hope and planned a swift return with wealth and health and with a youth unspent to those sweet ones that stayed with want at home say who shall blame him though the years are long and life is hard and waiting makes the heart grow old thus passed the time until the moon serene stood over high dominion like a dream of peace within the white transfigured woods and o'er the vast dew-dripping wilderness of slopes illumined with her silent fires then far beyond the home of pale red leaves and silver sluices and the shining stems of runnel blooms the dreamy wanderer saw the wilder for the vision of the moon stark desolations and a waste of plain all smit by flame and broken with the storms black ghosts of trees and sapless trunks that stood harsh hollow channels of the fiery noise which ran from bowl to bowl a year before and grew with ruin and was like indeed the roar of mighty winds with wintering streams that foam about the limits of the land and mix their swiftness with the flying seas now when the man had turned his face about to take his rest behold the gem-like eyes of ambushed wild things stared from bowl and brake with dumb amaze and faint recurring glance and fear anon that drove them down the brush while from the den the dingo like a scout in sheltered ways crept out and cowered near to sniff the tokens of the stranger's feast and marvel at the shadows of the flame thereafter grew the wind and chafing depths in distant waters sent a troubled cry across the slumberous forest and the chill of coming rain was on the sleeper's brow 
when flat as reptiles hutted in the scrub a deadly crescent crawled to where he lay a band of fierce fantastic savages that starting naked round the faded fire with sudden spears and swift terrific yells came bounding wildly at the white man's head and faced him staring like a dream of hell here let me pass i would not stay to tell of hopeless struggles under crushing blows of how the surging fiends with thickening strokes howled round the stranger till they drained his strength how love and life stood face to face with hate and death and then how death was left alone with night and silence in the sobbing rains so after many moons the searchers found the body mouldering in the mouldering dell amid the fungi and the bleaching leaves and buried it and raised a stony mound which took the mosses then the place became the haunt of fearful legends and the lair of bats and adders there he lies and sleeps from year to year in soft australian nights and through the furnaced noons and in the times of wind and wet yet never mourner comes to drop upon that grave the christian's tear or pluck the foul dank weeds of death away but while the english autumn filled her lap with faded gold and while the reapers cooled their flame-red faces in the clover grass they looked for him at home and when the frost had made a silence in the morning lanes and cooped the farmers by december fires they looked for him at home and through the days which brought about the million-coloured spring with moon-like splendours in the garden plots they looked for him at home while summer danced a shining singer through the tasselled corn they looked for him at home from sun to sun they waited season after season went and memory wept upon the lonely moors and hope grew voiceless and the watchers passed like shadows one by one away and he whose fate was hidden under forest leaves and in the darkness of untrodden dells became a marvel often by the hearths in winter nights and when the wind was wild outside the casements children heard the tale of how he left their native vales behind where he had been a child himself to shape new fortunes for his father's fallen house of how he struggled how his name became by fine devotion and unselfish zeal a name of beauty in a selfish land and then of how the aching hours went by with patient listeners praying for the step which never crossed the floor again so passed the tale to children but the bitter end remained a wonder like the unknown grave alone with god and silence in the hills end of poem this recording is in the public domain Euterpe by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Rachel Murray Child of light, the bright, the bird-like, Wilt thou float and float to me, Facing winds and sleets and waters, Flying glimpses of the sea? Down amongst the hills of tempest, Where the elves of tumult roam, blown wet shadows of the summits dim sonorous sprites of foam here and here my days are wasted shorn of leaf and stripped of fruit vexed because of speech half spoken maiden with the marvelous lute vexed because of songs half shapen smit with fire and mixed with pain part of thee and part of sorrow like a sunset pale with rain child of light the bright the bird-like wilt thou float and float to me 
facing winds and sleets and waters, flying glimpses of the sea. All night long, in fluent pauses, falling far, but full, but fine, faultless friend of flowers and fountains, do I hear that voice of thine? All night long, amidst the burden of the lordly storm that sings, high above the tumbled forelands, fleet and fierce with thunderings. Then and then, my love, Euterpe, lips of life replete with dreams, murmur for thy sweet, sharp fragments dying down Lathian streams. Murmur for thy mouth's marred music, splendid hints that burn and break, heavy with excess of beauty. Murmur for thy music's sake. All night long, in fluent pauses, falling far, but full, but fine, faultless friend of flowers and fountains, do I hear that voice of thine? In the yellow flame of evening, sound of thee doth come and go through the noises of the river and the drifting of the snow. In the yellow flame of evening, at the setting of the day, sound that lightens, falls and lightens, flickers, faints, and fades away. I am famished of thy silence, broken for that tender note, caught with its surpassing passion, caught and strangled in thy throat. We have naught to help thy trouble, naught for that which lieth mute on the harp string and the lute string and the spirit of the lute. In the yellow flame of evening, sound of thee doth come and go through the noises of the river and the drifting of the snow. Daughter of the dead red summers, men that laugh and men that weep call thee music. Shall I follow, choose their name and turn and sleep? What thou art, behold, I know not, but thy honey slakes and slays half the want which whitens manhood in the stress of alien days. Even as a wondrous woman, struck with love and great desire, hast thou been to me, Euterpe, half of tears and half of fire. But thy joy is swift and fitful, and a subtle sense of pain sighs through thy melodious breathing takes the rapture from thy strain. Daughter of the dead red summers, men that laugh and men that weep call thee music. Shall I follow, choose their name, and turn and sleep? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ellen Ray by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Rachel Murray A quiet song for Ellen, the patient Ellen Ray, A dreamer in the nightfall, a watcher in the day, The wedded of the sailor, who keeps so far away, A shadow on his forehead, for patient Ellen Ray. When autumn winds were driving across the chafing bay, he said the words of anger that wasted Ellen Ray. He said the words of anger and went his bitter way. Her dower was the darkness, the patient Ellen Ray. Your comfort is a phantom, my patient Ellen Ray. You house it in the nighttime. It fronts you in the day. And when the moon is very low, and when the lights are gray, you sit and hug a sorry hope, 
my patient Ellen Ray. You sit and hug a sorry hope, yet who will dare to say the sweetness of October is not for Ellen Ray? The bearer of a burden must rest at fall of day, and you have borne a heavy one, my patient Ellen Ray. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At Dusk by Henry Kendall. Read for LibriVox.org by Cal Taylor. At dusk, like flowers that shun the day, shy thoughts from dim recess break, and plead for words I dare not say, for your sweet sake. My early love, my first, my last, Mistakes have been that both must rue, but all passion of the past survives for you. The tender message hope might send sinks fainting at the lips of speech, for are you lover, are you friend, that I would reach? How much tonight I'd give to win, a banished peace, an old repose, but here I sit and sigh and sin when no one knows. The stern, the steadfast reticence, which made the dearest phrases halt, and checked the first and finest sense was not my fault. I held my words because there grew about my life persistent pride, and you were loved who never knew what love could hide. This purpose filled my soul like flame to win you wealth and take the place where care is not nor any shame to vex your face. I said, till then my heart must keep its secrets safe and unconfessed, and days and nights unknown to sleep the vow attest. Yet, oh, my sweet, it seems so long since you were near, and fate's retard, the sequel of a struggle strong, and life is hard, too hard when one is left alone, to wrestle passion never free, to turn and say to you, my own, come home to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Safi by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. Safi Strong pinions bore Safi, the dreamer, through the dazzle and whirl of a race, and the earth, raying up in confusion, like a sea thundered under his face. And the earth, raying up in confusion, passed flying and flying afar, till it dropped like a moon into silence and waned from a moon to a star was it light was it shadow he followed that he swept through those desperate tracts with his hair beating back on his shoulders like the tops of the wind hackled flax i come murmured safi the dreamer i come but thou fliest before but thy way hath the breath of the honey and the scent of the myrrh evermore his eyes were the eyes of a watcher held on by luxurious faith and his lips were the lips of a longer amazed with the beauty of death for ever and ever he murmured my love for the sweetness with thee do i follow thy footsteps said safi like the wind on a measureless sea and fronting the furthermost spaces he kept through the distances dim till the days and the years and the cycles were lost and forgotten by him when he came to the silver star portals the queen of that wonderful place looked forth from her towers resplendent and started and dreamt in his face and one said this is safi the only who lived in a planet below and housed him apart from his fellows a million of ages ago he erred if he suffers to clutch at high lights from the wood and the street not caring to see how his brothers were content with the things at their feet but she whispered ah turn to the stranger he looks like a lord of the land for his eyes are the eyes of an angel and the thought on his forehead is grand is there never a peace for the sinner whose sin is in this that he mars the light of his worship of beauty forgetting the flower for the stars behold him my sister immortal and doubt that he knoweth his shame 
who raves in the shadow for sweetness and gloats on the ghost of a flame his sin is his sin if he suffers who wilfully straitened the truth and his doom is his doom if he follows a lie without sorrow or ruth and another from uttermost verges ran out with a terrible voice let him go it is well that he goeth though he break with the lot of his choice i come murmured safi the dreamer i come but thou fliest before but thy way hath the breath of the honey and the scent of the myrrh evermore my queen said the first of the voices he hunteth a perilous wraith arrayed with voluptuous fancies and ringed with tyrannical faith wound up in the heart of his error he must sweep through the silences dire like one in the dark of a desert allured by a fallacious fire and she faltered and asked like a doubter when he hangs on those spaces sublime with the terror that knoweth no limit and holdeth no record of time forgotten of god and the demons will he keep to his fancy amain can he live for that horrible chaos of flame and perpetual rain but an answer as soft as a prayer fell down from a high hidden land and the words were the words of a language which none but the gods understand end of poem this recording is in the public domain daniel henry denai by henry kendall read for librivox dot org by carolyn daniel henry denai take the harp but very softly for our brothers touch the strings wind and wood shall help to wail him waves and mournful mountain springs take the harp but very softly for the friend who grew so old through the hours we would not hear of nights we would not fain behold other voices sweeter voices shall lament him year by year though the morning finds us lonely though we sit and marvel here marvel much while summer cometh trammelled with november wheat gold about her forehead gleaming green and gold about her feet yea and while the land is dark with plover gull and gloomy gleed where the cold swift songs of winter fill the interlucent reed yet my harp and o oh, my fathers never look for sorrow's lay making life a mighty darkness in the patient noon of day since he resteth whom we loved so out beyond these fleeting seas blowing clouds and restless regions paved with old perplexities in a land where thunder breaks not in a place unknown of snow where the rain is mute for ever where the wild winds never go home of far-forgotten phantoms genie of our peaceful prime shining by perpetual waters past the ways of change and time heaven of the harried spirit where it folds its wearied wings turns its face and sleeps asleep with deep forgetfulness of things his should be a grave by mountains in a cool and thick mossed lee with the lone creek falling past it falling ever to the sea his should be a grave by waters by a bright and broad lagoon making steadfast splendours hallowed by the quiet shining moon there the elves of many forests wandering winds and flying lights born of green of happy mornings dear to yellow summer nights full of dole for him that loved them then might halt and then might go finding fathers of the people to their children speaking low speaking low of one who failing suffered all the poet's pain dying with the dead leaves round him hopes which never grow again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Merope 
by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Rachel Murray. Far in the ways of the hyaline wastes, in the face of the splendid six of the sisters, the star-dowered sisters ineffably bright, Merope sitteth, the shadow-like wife of a monarch unfriended of Aedes, of Orcus, the fierce, the implacable god of the night. Merope, fugitive Merope, lost to thyself and thy lover, cast like a dream out of thought, with the moons which have passed into sleep, what shall avail thee, Alcyone's tears, or the sight to discover of Sisyphus pallid for thee by the blue bitter lights of the deep? pallid but patient for sorrow o oh, thou of the fire and the water half with the flame of the sunset and kin to the streams of the sea hast thou the songs of old times for desire of thy dark featured daughter sweet with the lips of thy yearning o oh, ethra with tokens of thee songs that would lull her like kisses forgotten of silence where speech was less than the silence that bound it as passion is bound by a ban seeing we know of thee mother we turning and hearing how each was wrapped in the other ere merope faltered and fell for a man mortal she clave to forgetting her birthright forgetting the lord-like sons of the many-winged father and chiefs of the plume and the star therefore because that her sin was the grief of the grand and the godlike sitteth thy child then a morning moon bleaker the faded and far ringed with the flower-like six of the seven arrayed and anointed ever with beautiful pity she watches she weeps and she wanes blind as a flame on the hills of the winter in hours appointed for the life of the foam and the thunder the strength of the imminent rains who hath a portion alcyone like her asterope fairer than sunset on snow and beloved of all brightness say what is there left sadder and paler than pleone's daughter disconsolate bearer of trouble that smites like a sword of the gods to the break of the heft demeter and dryope known to the forests the falls and the fountains yearly because of their walking and wailing and wringing of hands are they as one with this woman of hyrie wild in the mountains breaking her heart in the frosts and the fires of the uttermost lands these have their bitterness this for persephone that for Achaean homes and the lights of a kindness blown out with the stress of her shame one for her child and one for her sin but thou above all art an alien girt with the halos that vex thee and wrapped in a grief beyond name yet saith sisyphus sisyphus stricken and chained of the minioned kings of great darkness and trodden in dust by the feet of the fates sweet are the ways of thy watching and pallid and perished and pinioned moon amongst maidens i leap for thy love like a god at the gates leap for the dreams of a rose of the heavens and beat at the portals paved with the pain of unsatisfied pleadings for thee and for thine but zeus is immutable master and these are the walls the immortals build for our sighing and who may set lips 
at the Lord's and repine. Therefore, he saith, I am sick for thee, Merope, faint for the tender touch of thy mouth, and the eyes like the lights of an altar to me. But lo, thou art far, and thy face is a still and a sorrowful splendor, and the storm is abroad with the rain on the perilous straits of the sea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. After the Hunt by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Cal Taylor Underneath the windy mountain walls Forth we rode an eager band By the surges and the verges and the gorges Till the night was on the land On the hazy, mazy land Far away the bounding prey Leapt across the ruts and logs But we galloped, galloped, galloped on Till we heard the yapping of the dogs the yapping and the yelping of the dogs. Oh, it was a madly merry day, we shall not so soon forget, and the edges and the ledges and the ridges haunt us with their echoes yet. Echoes, echoes, echoes yet. While the moon is on the hill, gleaming through the streaming fogs, don't you hear the yapping of the dogs, the yapping and the yelping of the dogs. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rose Lorraine by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Cal Taylor Sweet water moons blown into lights Of flying gold on pool and creek And many sounds and many sights Of younger days are back this week. I cannot say I sought to face Or greatly cared to cross again the subtle spirit of the place whose life is mixed with rose lorraine what though her voice rings clearly through a nightly dream i gladly keep no wish have i to start anew heart fountains that have ceased to leap here face to face with different days and later things that plead for love it would be worse than wrong to raise a phantom far too fain to move but rose lorraine ah rose lorraine i'll whisper now where no one hears if you should chance to meet again the man you kissed in soft dead years just say for once he suffered much and add to this his fate was worse because of me my voice my touch there is no passion like the first if i that breathe your slow sweet name as one breathes low notes on a flute have vexed your peace with word of blame the phrase is dead, the lips are mute, yet when I turn towards the wall, in stormy nights and times of rain, I often wish you could recall your tender speeches, Rose Lorraine, because, you see, I thought them true, and did not count you self-deceived, and gave myself and all to you, and looked on love as life achieved, then came the bitter sudden change, the fastened lips, the dumb despair, the first few weeks were very strange, and long, and sad, and hard to bear. No woman lives with power to burst, my passions bond and set me free. For Rose is last where Rose was first, and only Rose is fair to me. The faintest memory of her face, the willful face that hurt me so, is followed by a fiery trace that Rose Lorraine must never know. I keep a faded ribbon string you used to wear about your throat, and of this pale, this perished thing, I think I know the threads by rote. God help such love to touch your hand to loiter where your feet might fall. You marvelous girl, my soul would stand the worst of hell, its fires and all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Leaves from Australian Forest by Henry Kendall.